Okay, uh, good evening. I'm calling to order the March 4, 2024 meeting of the South Borough Select Board. And um, because I was out the last days of last week and our Vice Chair Kathy Cook very graciously stepped in and organized the agenda for this meeting, I'd like to turn it over to Kathy to, uh, to, to chair this meeting since she organized the agenda. Thank you, Andrew. And again, we're sorry about why you're turning this over to me. Um, this is going to be a very quick meeting, um, maybe a record for us. We really only have one substantive stuff um, item, which is to talk about, to begin the conversation on water rates, which we'll do shortly. All right, so let's start out with um, public comment. No? Okay. Okay, so um, our next item is going to be to discuss the um, setting of water rates for the next fiscal year. So we've got, as our guest tonight, our DPW head, Mr. Cundiff, and our water consultant, Matt Abramson. Abraham, sorry, Matt. Abrahams, Abrahams. Good evening. Hi. We'll hold you true to your word and have an, having a quick meeting. So in your packet, I distributed a memo which kind of lays out where we were last year, how we got here this year, and where we think we're headed for the rates coming forward. Um, so last year, the board took a new approach on summarizing the fees and calculating the fees. Um, we established what, what was called a base fee, which basically is a fixed cost associated with the water department. So that's a fee that gets charged to all users on the water system, and it's based on an equivalent meter size. So if you have a larger meter, you're gonna pay a little more. If you have a smaller meter, you're gonna pay less. Um, but that, that base fee is strictly for our fixed operating costs. Um, the user consumption fees um, are a tiered approach, and we have four tiers, uh, and it's based upon you know, how much water each user uses. So the first tier, which is zero to 1,000 uh, 1, cubic feet, um, <clears throat> It is based upon, it is a lower tier, and then as we go up for each tier, that consumption rate that you're paying goes up. Um, so what we use to determine the fees uh, associated with, with the uh, consumption rate uh, vary depending on ongoing projects what kind of variable projects we had, obviously the MWRA fee that we pay associated with our water, um, <clears throat> pump maintenance, operating and maintenance costs. Um, so that is all based on a number of equations and it's, it's really a little sophisticated as to how we, how we calculate it for each tier, but um, Matt has done a great spreadsheet that allows us to, you know, theoretically put in numbers and what if scenarios, which allows, allows us to um, get to where we want to be. Um, <clears throat> so as part of that, I wanted to just mention we have our capital master plan, which um, goes over, it, it laid out a number of projects we have on the docket for the next few years. Um, some of the projects have been completed since it was done in 2022. Um, other projects we think may or may not happen depending on the status of the Hopkinton connection. So because that's still unresolved at this point, we actually took those projects that would be affected by the Hopkinton project and put them on the side for this year. So we're not considering them as part of this recommendation. Um, <clears throat> the one project that we are considering is a looping between presidential estates 
and Fisher Road that will improve the circulation in that area. And that was identified by PAR Engineering. And it's roughly about a $600,000 project that we're going to get going on right away once, you know, once we get into next fiscal year. Um, so in a nutshell, I'm going to let Matt take over from here. Um, Matt Abrams, we've used the Abrams Group for the past number of years to help us with our rate schedule. And Matt's very familiar with the history of the town and the methodology we've used over those years. Um, the thing about this year's approach and last year's approach is it's logical in terms of how you derive the base fee and the consumption fee. You think it's logical? I do. Okay. And it, it, it actually makes the most sense. Um, all the users are benefiting from the, the fixed cost, so they all share in the fixed cost of the operation. The variable, which, which is the, their consumption rate, um, they have control over, and that's going to be our operating costs and, and <clears throat> capital projects. So if they want to not water their lawn and save on money, that they're entitled to do that. So, but the fixed cost is covered. So it, it's a logical approach that way. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Matt, and he has a little presentation. Okay, thank you, Bill. Good evening. Uh, Matt Abrahams from the Abrahams Group. Happy to be back before you this evening to talk about water rates. Um, as Bill mentioned, we have assisted the town in the recent past with setting water rates, including this past, uh, last fiscal year where, um, as Bill mentioned, there was a fairly significant overhaul. I'm not sure that's the right word, but it was, there were significant changes to the structure, um, as well as, uh, as Bill mentioned, a, a relook at the service charge and some changes to that as well, which we'll talk about this evening. So that's the first slide that we have for you tonight. I'm about to go through it. We have, I think, four slides for you this evening. And it's really meant as um, just a, a, a quick recap as to where we were, where we are now, and also where we think we're going. And to, to, as I believe was mentioned already, to start the conversation for what rates might look like headed into FY25, which is the next fiscal year. So for FY24, so thinking back to what we were thinking about, what we were looking at about a year ago, the select board approved a, straight, a rate structure change. And that change was, the t there were I don't think we changed the number of tiers, but we changed what the tiers look like. So the, the tier breaks were lowered. What that means is um, the amount of usage per tier was lowered from what it was prior, which meant that users, if they were to use the same amount of, of water, would get into the higher tiers a little more quickly because of that change. There was also a, tier one was a minimum tier, which means that no matter what amount of water was used, up to 750 cubic feet, that there was no change in cost to the user. Now that minimum tier is no longer, tier one is now a flow base rate, so the user is paying for all of the flow used in tier one. Um, the rates in the higher tiers did not change, meaning the dollar amount for tiers two through four, the dollar amount rate did not change, but as mentioned earlier, the tier breaks were lowered, so there was an impact even to users who were in the, in the higher tiers. In addition to the rate structure change, the select board approved the service charge change. Um, as was mentioned, this is a meter-based service charge. That is one that was in effect earlier, but we didn't know at the time, we didn't know what it was really based on, if it was based on anything at all. It may have been, it may not have been, we weren't sure. So we, we reinvigorated that and took a look at the best way to set that. Um, the group that was working on this decided to focus on certain fixed costs that the water department had, uh, regardless of how much water was used, and chose to identify those costs and recover those costs with the service charge. That was implemented last year. And as Bill mentioned, it's based on equivalent meters, so larger meters pay more under that service charge setup. When we were looking at what we thought needed to happen past FY24 last year, because we always provide a multi-year look, we usually look five years into the future, when we do these, analysis, these analyses, 
It was showing a need for a 3% annual increase to both rates and the service charge in order to maintain the targeted amount of retained earnings. And the target in this case is 20% of water fund expenditures. That is, a, is what we consider to be a healthy retained earnings balance and one that we think a town like Southboro should, should shoot for. So we include that in our analysis as the target. Now, where are we today? We have updated our analysis since last year. Um, we are now looking at an additional year into the future, and we're more comfortable where we think things are headed in the future now. And we are seeing that we do not, no longer believe that 3% per year is enough to cover the annual fund expenses. And as Bill mentioned, some of the capital that, are, that is part of the plan now. Part, some of the reasons why, less revenue this past year. If we think back to last summer, last summer was extremely wet. At the time when rates were set last year, we didn't know that was gonna be the case. Um, so very wet conditions means people do not water their lawns as much, they don't use as much water outdoors, that means revenues are down. Uh, also a refocus on capital planning. I took a look back as to what was in our analysis last year for capital and there wasn't much at all. Now there's more that we're focused on. We're gonna cover that a little bit more in a moment. And also the indirect cost amount um, went up fairly significantly because of OPEB. There was an increase in, in the OPEB obligation uh, and that was added very recently to the budget for FY25. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, service charges. So. We thought this was, um, I guess, a critical piece for thinking about next steps, where we're headed. As I mentioned earlier, the methodology to set service charges that was implemented last year is based on certain costs. Specifically, those costs are salaries in the water department and indirect costs. And those costs were split among the different users based on meter size with larger meters paying more. We already talked about that. So thinking about FY25, that methodology, if it were to be used the same as it was in FY24, which would mean that the same cost would be included and designed to, be, to recover those costs, the meter charge, the service charges would end up going up about 25% for that reason. And if we think about it, the reason why is because of the indirect cost increase that I just mentioned a moment ago. Is that the predominant reason? I mean, I, I know we went from, if we're talking only about yeah. the indirect cost. Yeah. If we're only talking about the indirect cost that the town charges the Water Enterprise Fund for all the services the town provides, or are we talking about something else as far as your indirect cost? So the indirect costs are what you just mentioned. Okay, because I went from 250 to 373. So I did go up a lot. Yeah, most okay. of it's, most of it is related to the OPEB increase that I mentioned. Yeah. Not related to the services that the town is charging. Those are still in there. All right, so that's what you're calling indirect cost is that charge. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's services, sometimes we refer to them as central services. So if we think about the departments here at, town, at the townhouse, the services that they provide on behalf of the water fund, like the accounting department, for example, the treasurer. They do things for the water department, but they're not paid out of the water fund for those things. So it's almost like a reimbursement of sorts. That's an indirect charge. Um, that's just part of it. And then um, I, didn't, I haven't looked too, too thoroughly at what's in there. I do know OPEB's in there. There might be some insurances in there as well. Um, but having indirect costs for an enterprise fund is a very, very common thing. Okay, but that's it. That's what's causing the fixed costs to be more now than they were a year ago. Is that one change? The, the, well, salaries has an impact, yeah, but not they... nearly as much as the indirect cost increase. Okay, all right. Yes, it, it, the indirect cost increase that I've mentioned is the main driver here. <coughs> um, so. Does that mean, that, does that mean that then that we would expect uh, budget reductions in the departments that are now being partially uh, funded from these indirect costs? Yeah, so if you go to the other um, income and expenses on the Excel workbook, you'll see that there's a bigger number there. So yes, it's, been, it's impacted. It's basically reduced it on the town side. So it is a net um, um, zero bit, sum here. Yeah, well. Uh, so water pays more, town pays less. So, uh, full disclosure, I have a well and I don't have access to municipal water. So I, from a purely selfish perspective, that's a good, but I, I 
just want to make sure we understand. Yeah, so you're right, zero sum. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So, again, just to recap, if that same methodology were to be used and used the exact same way, meaning just update the costs and then recover those costs, you're looking at about a 25% increase for the service charge. And that doesn't necessarily have to be the way that it's set. I mean, we did make a conscious effort to base it on cost last year. And in general, I'd recommend that the charge be based on some costs. Um, but that doesn't have to be the way that it, that it moves forward. And the point being that if the select board were to choose not to follow that methodology and maybe increase it less, then that would have a, a greater impact on the flow base rates. Some, the money would have to come from somewhere. So that means the rates would, would be higher, in essence. <coughs> This is, I'm new to the game, but the, the four inch users and the two inch users, who are, who are those? Who are the accounts that have those? Yes. I don't have that at the time. I could probably get you an answer though within a few minutes here. If you just well, are they residential or are they businesses? No, they'd be businesses that size. So are they going to, I mean, 25% seems like a big jump, but when you see the base charges for some of these, it's not that much of a jump, is it really? But I can actually tell you what the increases would be if that interests you. Maybe that would be useful. But Marguerite, don't forget that the overall bill is not going to go up 25%, just a piece of it is. And the rest of it is going to possibly go up 3% as far as their actual usage. Yep. So I'm not sure what their overall bill is going up with that, but it's a mix of the two. Correct. And if they don't use as much, if we have another wet summer, there's right, a, right. hard to predict all those variables. Because twenty five percent of thirty seven dollars and ninety four cents doesn't hit me as catastrophic. So the increase there for the number that you just mentioned, which is for a five eighths inch meter, is about nine dollars and fifty cents per quarter. Okay. That's a quarterly. Trip. So forty bucks a year. Yeah. Um, would I be correct in assuming that most homes in town have either a three-quarter or a one-inch connection? Do you have that number? I would say that's a correct assumption, but okay. I haven't been here long enough to say that confidently. And so the smallest meter size is five-eighths <coughs> inch, and commonly residential accounts have five-eighths inch, three-quarters, sometimes an inch in size. Okay. But not usually more than that. Okay, but it. So, Okay. So um, I have some counts that we compiled last year, if that's helpful. It's, it, 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 we can take that offline. So yeah. the, the other question I have, I actually got several questions. Um, can you give me an idea about what, how many cubic feet a typical home uses? And I realize that there's no such thing. Right, but we do, on like, average. we do like to put something in there. And when we do these analyses, if you're just talking about percentages, sometimes that's hard to, to grasp or, or figure out what, what we're saying there. So we always put dollars on it as well. So we do have a, a table of users, sample users, not tied to specific users in town, but sample users based on their usage on a quarterly bill. And we did calculate what we think the average residential user is, and we have that as 2,600 cubic feet per quarter. Okay, so they would be just over into the, the tier three for, the, for their, their highest rate. Yes. Okay. Um, so here's the other question that I have, and it, it's, it's now it's a competitive question because, at, I mean, I'm aware that there are folks out there that now who like to water their lawns, and I guess we really do want them to water their lawns because the MWRA wants to sell water. Absolutely. And, uh, we want to but, it. you know, at, at, at that higher end, we are also competing with people who might make the decision to put in a well or may have a well on their property. And I'm just curious as to whether, you know, you've done any sense it whether you're sensitive to that or not. Whether we're sensitive to people possibly moving Whether we price well. it so high that we encourage people to go dig a well for their irrigation. Um, you know, stay on town water for the house, but mm -hmm. dig a well for their irrigation. So is there a, some type of break even where it looks like we might flip people over to mm -hmm. thinking that's the better thing to do? Um, that's not yeah. probably a hard thing to compute. Okay. Yeah, no. uh, but I mean, I, I know people that have done that. I do too. Yeah, it's definitely possible. I but do too. my recollection is we actually went to this tiered pricing to have higher rates for higher users to actually encourage water uh, conservation, as a matter of fact. So I think that was the conversation. That's exactly right. John we Butler did, did a study ago. on advisory, whatever and, now, 15 uh, years ago. Use Sudbury yeah, as an example. Yeah. 
and from that concluded that yeah. Um, yeah. you know the higher prices is going Makes to encourage costs, and we've got the numbers to prove it. Our water use has gone down, down, go down, 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 down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, my personal view is I think conservation is a better trumps the uh, um, issue of, of selling more water and generating income. I'm willing to pay a little bit more to get conservation. Well, I guess frankly. if someone drills a well, all we're doing is walking away from revenue. Um, right. Yep. Uh, and, uh, I've heard it said that the NWRA wants to sell water. They've yeah. got lots of water. But the flip side of that is, and it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect one to one, but the NWRA does charge the town for water use. So yeah. if there's less water usage for, because people are moving to wells, then the charges in theory would be less as well. And, and the MWRA actually has the same issue that we do in terms of fixed costs. So, in fact, uh, they're, motiv they're selling less water. They're motivated to increase the price to cover their fixed cost, which yeah. doesn't change. So it's a That's true, but it's vicious a, cycle there. The way it breaks out, and I know you notice it's based yep. on how many, the share of each right. community. Right. Yep. So yep. Someone has water. Uh, Kathy? Exactly. I, I have a question. Andrew? Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was just a, 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 an aside. So hold on a second, Andrew's got a question. So could you explain, again, um, the, the OPED piece of this? So for, you increase the base charge because of the, in, there's an um, additional indirect cost for OPEB, so then where through the budget does that you know, money flow to? Do you understand my question? Uh, I'll try and answer it, and you okay. can tell me if I answer or not. All right. Um, so the indirect cost is, is a line item in the water budget annually. Yeah. So those are costs that the water fund pays or transfers into the general fund yeah. to recover costs in the general fund. So the number identified in the indir indirect cost line, there's a, there's a methodology that the town uses every year to mm -hmm. determine what that amount is. Actually, I probably have it if we need to look at it. but. Um, there are certain costs in there, and these are costs that are to, that are calculated each year based on whatever they are that year. So, like if we're talking about the Treasury Department, it's probably an allocation for their costs based on some percentage or some yep. number, and their costs presumably go up every year. Their budget probably goes up every year, so yep. that'll bump up a little bit every year. And then there are other th other costs that might be a little bit more firm, I guess. Um, if it's an insurance, that might come from insurance agency and whatever the costs are, whatever the costs are, they might go up, probably go up every year, but maybe they go down a year. Whatever that number is, is whatever that number is. OPEB specifically, do you, are you familiar with, with OPEB and what it is? Yep. You are, okay. So uh, that's an obligation, it's a liability for, I guess is probably the right term, that the, the town really should be setting aside for future expenses, right? Yep. Um, so the specific reason why it went up, and I'm not an expert on this, but I did hear that it's because of um, multiple employees that weren't part of that calculation in the past that are now part of that calculation. And the most recent actuar actuarial study provided to the town included those employees, and therefore the number's higher than the last time the study was done. That's exactly what Brian Ballantyne told me this yeah. afternoon, too, yeah. word for word. Yep. So and we, we haven't seen that latest study yet. We're scheduled to listen no, to No, but it's folks. done now, so that's exactly yeah. what he says is happening. And the other variability is that that number, actuarial science, is extremely opaque for me anyway. Yeah, yeah that but number in this case, it seems there should have been yeah. more put into the pot yeah. as far as right. who contributes to, to the cost that's or the services provide right. to the water department. So this is not going to go down. It's going right. to, yeah. you know, so it's yeah. up now and it should stay up. But even if, if you right? keep the same number of employees in there, We've seen some interesting swings in terms of the OPEB liability as market interest rates and stock market performance vary, et cetera. So it's hard to predict those numbers. But and, and when we went through this methodology last year, you know, we didn't know this was going to happen. You know, we we yep. chose that methodology. It made sense at the time. It still yep. makes sense. It's just unfortunate that the numbers are a little so bit different. So if we knew, if we knew, if back a year ago we knew what we now know, we would have set the base charge a little bit higher, right? Possibly, it would have been an interesting discussion because part of the, part of my opinion, part of what was, a, one of the reasons why it was appealing the way we did it last year was because there was not that much change between the prior version and the new way for the smaller meter sizes. It was only like a 50 cent or a dollar difference per quarter. And that was good to see because there wouldn't be a significant impact to those users. 
Um, so if it, if it would have been higher, yeah, I mean, it would have been an interesting discussion to see if we should have gone that route. All right. And like the whole philosophy of, you know, setting a correct base charge is so that you kind of aren't subject to this variability from year to year. You make sure you cover your fixed cost. Yeah, that, that's one way to look at it. Yeah. Um, it, it is, you have no idea what the weather's going to be like, right? Yeah. Um, and if, if you're completely relying on people using water, it's, it's more difficult to maintain or maintain enough revenue year over year. If you have a steady income like you just referenced, yeah, that changes it a little bit in your favor. But this specific methodology is, is saying there are costs. We know there are costs that are going to be there whether people use water or not. Like, for example, snowbirds. They might be gone all winter long, right? They don't use any water. But the department still has costs. You know, they need to, they need to do their day-to-day their day-to-day -day work. They need to read their meters. They need to issue a bill if they have anything. Like those things happen regardless of, of whether people use water or not. So it's designed in a way to recover those costs that the water department has regardless of what happens. All right. So tonight you just want us to affirm that we agree with the methodology so then you can come back on the 19th with the specific um, proposal for what the rates should be with this philosophy? Right. That so gives one, us time. One, once we get direction from the board tonight, um, Matt and I will work on developing a few <coughs> scenarios with fee schedules, and I'll distribute those to the board in advance of the next meeting. You could call us with questions, and um, certainly at the next meeting, we'll be looking for a vote. So you know, Matt, when you came last year, you had um, all the details of the users and what they so if we could see that too you know you know per um, truly see who's in these tiers right and he's in the tiers so we can really see what the impact <coughs> is in total mm -hmm. um, again I'm not so concerned about a you know 25 percent increase on 38 dollars right um, the higher tiers it's you know the, the higher the bigger um, meters yeah it's, it's bigger but those are the businesses etc so it'd be helpful to see that prior to our vote, so we really understand what we're buying into. And if we do it on the 19th, then that gives you time, I think, to notify the town, right, and have it effective before the summer hits, correct? correct. We got mixed up last year with the billing cycles, remember? We messed up. Um, so it's June 1st and not July 1st, right? <coughs> correct, okay. and um, we're actually, uh, on this, this current billing that we're going out, we're notifying people of the rate change, um, and we're planning on posting it on the website and that's basically um, for convenience and timing. So based upon when the board votes it, um, we're gonna, they're going to start using the new rate at the beginning of next month so, so that we are currently sending the bills out. It's going to have a notice. Visit the website for the new rates. You'll decide that at the next meeting. After that, we'll post it on the website then the usage will start immediately after that at the start of next month. Okay, that's pretty fast. So the quarters are March 1st, June 1st, September 1st? Yes. December 1st, right? Yes. Um, so you've got a bill that's going to cover March 1st to June 1st? That's correct. Is that right? And I'm not, I'm asking, not telling. Yeah. So is that right? Uh, I believe so. I. I just know we got mixed up last year, and we thought it was July 1st, and we had to come back and I've worked change. with Tammy on this, and my understanding is usage starts the beginning of next month for the new rate. A April 1, yeah. But the bills, I think, are read think March 1st, June 1st, right? So they read the meter on Correct. June 1st, right? We're finalizing the readings now. Okay. We're going to send bills out shortly so that the new rate is going to start next month. The key thing for me, though, is that the new rate starts after people have been notified. Yes. And that's, that's what we got in trouble with last time, I think. So, uh, again, I don't uh, know all the dates there, but as long as, as we vote, the rates change, people are notified in time to say, oops, I want to change my behavior but relative listen, to this listen, rate. So I agree with you. Yeah, we I'm, don't vote to March 19th, yeah. and you want them to be effective April 1st? Correct. It's not a lot of time. Um, we got to notify quickly, yeah. So you can truly get the notification out quickly after March 9th? Again, the current bill is going to reference the town website to visit for the rate schedule. The new You're rates. saying in the, the day bill, after the expect night. rates to go up or something? Um, and they're, they're the, the new schedule will be implemented the beginning of next month. Um, March 20th 
the day after our meeting, they will be posted on the website so people can view them then. So the bill says new rates effective April 1. Check the Correct. website for new rates, Correct. basically. So Correct. they have been notified in Correct. theory. Okay. Are you seeing a similar um, uh, increase in rates in, in surrounding towns? Yeah, I think so. I think it's fair to say that. Um, if you look back to next last summer and the impact that it had on revenues everywhere, mm -hmm. it honestly was the wettest season in maybe 15 years. So, yep. Yep. Um, you know, that's coming off a very dry season. So it's been it's been very up and down. But yes, we are seeing, and when people, when, when communities set rates, they generally do so in a conservative way, right? Assuming, not worst case scenario, but maybe they don't assume best case scenario. They're pretty careful about how, in case things don't go their way, that they're covered. But then the, the way that the water usage went everywhere the last nine months or whatever it is, was well below any, any conservative estimate. So, so communities have, are, are trying to make up for that, for lack of a better term. There's bad news for water rates, but ex exceptionally good news for our golf course. Best, <laughs> best course condition in years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, is, is this methodology something that you find other towns are now using substantially, or are we out of step with how other towns are approaching this pricing decision? Are you referring to the service charge? Service charge, oh. base charge, and service charge, and yep. usage charge. Um, it's, it's common. It's not everywhere, but it's mm -hmm. common. Uh, we're seeing fixed charges more and more, whether it's a service charge like, like the town of Southboro has um, or just a, like a flat fee, for example. I live in Ashland, and there's just a flat fee. It's not, it's not meter-based. It's no not meter. increasing. It's just one number that everybody pays. But we do, see, uh, we do see fixed charges more and more, almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the work that we tend to do with the, the clients that we work with if, if those clients want to implement a fixed charge, we would push them in the direction of the methodology used here in South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as we discussed it last time, I think that fixed plus variable makes an awful lot of sense in terms of, of uh, some motivation for people to watch how much they use of a scarce resource. And yeah. This is not a bad combination, I think. So thank you. Yeah, sure. So Matt, when you, come, you and Bill come back on the 19th, you're going to present um, the new proposed base charges, the new proposed tiers, right, as Correct. far as the rates there. Yes. So you expect those tiers to um, um, move up? Um, I think his next slide gets into that a little. Yeah, we do have more slides that we can, we can talk about. But to answer your question, we don't expect the tier structure to change. Remember last year we, we changed the tier breaks. We're not looking at that this year. We're just looking at what the rates should be. Within in the tiers. Tier. Okay. Yes. Right. So the dollar amount increasing. Okay, so you keep showing us what you want us to see. Yeah, uh, I think we only have two more slides to get through. So this one, the last one was on the service charge. And the rates, what we would recommend to the town would be based on the decision with the service charge. They kind of go hand in hand, right? Because like I said earlier, if you choose to do the methodology that was used for the service charge last year, that means the rates would in theory be lower if you don't choose to do that service charge methodology and you increase the service charge but by a lesser amount, then the rates would be higher. You know, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, so this is what we've done so far. And we do have, as was mentioned earlier, that all those numbers that you referenced, we have those numbers, but for tonight's presentation, we kept it a little higher level. Um, but we're, we have a few numbers here for you. So if you were to use the same methodology for the, the service charge, we're looking at a 3% rate increase uh, for the next few years. And that was in line with what we were looking at last year. Now, the service charge is higher, as we talked about, but the rates themselves, the flow base rates, would be in line with what we were showing last year. I'm sorry, so the proposed rate increase, this is if you increase the base rate by roughly 25% from this year into the next year, you can expect that the projected increase of the base rate or the flow base rates for the next flow base rate. So the, flow. the rates in the tiers, which I refer to as flow base rates, because mm -hmm. okay. charging for flow. That's why I call them. So instead of two dollars, it's two dollars and six cents. Is what we'd end up with for that first At year. Three yes, percent. Yeah. So then, but to me, the most important sentence is this one, which says, "If we go with that methodology, we're going to end up with an average bill 
uh, $12.50 per quarter, so $50 a year for the average water bill increase. Yes, that would be the increase over what they currently pay. Yeah. Yes. We, if you were to do the, the larger service charge increase in the 3% full base, yep. And then the flip of that is, if you were to choose not to do the same methodology, and I just, I put 4.5% in for an increase of the service charge, I'm not saying that's what you should do, but just to show you an example, that would be a 5% increase in the rates, the flow base rates over the next few years. And the impact of that is $6.50 per quarter. So that's a fairly sizable difference between the two. But it's one of those things that <coughs> if you're doing less in year one, then you're gonna do more in the subsequent years, whereas the other one, they're gonna go in the opposite direction, and they're gonna meet in the middle. So it's really which path you wanna take. You're happy? Yeah, yeah. And I think the last year, when you had a, you know, a bigger presentation, because we were you know, doing a lot more things, I, it was also interesting to me, because I think you had more slides that showed like year over year, retained earnings, all of that. That would also be interesting. Yeah. Just, just to have at hand for the next Yeah, I, th I think that for next presentation, we would model it similar to last year's. Okay. And you're available to come on the 19th? <laughs> Let me check. So that's, we're back to, that's a Tuesday. Right. We're, this is a very unusual night that we're meeting as far as the Monday goes. You already told me about that one. Yeah, you'll, you're yeah, at I the Cape. You'll, be, you'll be here late. Yeah. I'll be here late? Yes. <laughs> come on now. We're, we're, oh, easy. Yeah, we're we easy. We talked about that. We did. <laughs> okay. Right, sorry. I, I have another meeting that night. That's what he's referring to. The 19th. I didn't put it in. Yes, I can be here. Okay. I, I might need to be in the back end of the agenda, though, as Bill referenced. If that's the case, you should um, let Bill know that so that when Andrew puts it together, he knows where to put you. And we do have one more slide if you want to cover it. It's about capital. We can go real quick through it. Yeah. Um, so with either scenario, meaning regardless of really which, which path you take, included in our analysis is, uh, are these things for capital. The presidential um, drive at Fisher Road Loop, I think Bill mentioned that earlier, and miscellaneous engineering, um, which we were carrying as 250000 FY25, that's in the water budget as of now, and $100,000 annually going forward from there. Um, also two pieces of equipment. Uh, they cost $80,000 and $55,000 uh, respectively or each. Um, so all of that is currently included. We did talk about at least other capital that is not currently included, subject to recommendation as part of the water master plan. That's Lover's Lane, Water Mains, and the Tara Tank Painting Project. Those are projects that we did discuss, but they're not currently included in our analysis. Um, additional capital investment is likely if and when the retained earnings balance builds. So in other words, let's say things get dry and you start building up your, your reserves a little bit. So spending it on capital would be a, a good way to do that, a good way to use the, those mm -hmm. funds. And as Bill mentioned earlier, we're assuming no, no Hopkin and contribution at this mm -hmm. point in the analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, roughly, what's the cost of the Lover's Lane and Terra Tank repainting projects? Off the top of my head, I want to say it's just over a million dollars because we had talked about the contribution from Hopkinton not quite covering it. Okay. And that's a number that Ms. Galligan had given us to work with. That's why we right. did what we did. Now, bear in mind, that number is a few years old. It's from that 2022 master. Plan. Right. Yeah. How about the tank painting? About ballpark? That's going to be about $2 million. Wow. Does that $1 million include the, like a repaving of the road after you put it in the new? What are Mainer? Uh, good question. I'm not sure what the okay. basis is for that. It's not in the report. All right. No, I don't remember that. We didn't get into that detail. She just gave us a number. Uh, no, because I'm remembering, right. wasn't there when we did the, for the paving that was done <coughs> last round, wasn't there the bid that went out and one that part of the alt bid was for Lover's Lane? Yes. yes. That was. That's a big yes. alt. What do you yes, say? And they That's took a big it out. They, they took yeah. it out. Yeah. They took it out because yeah. it was such a huge big thing. Yeah. Okay. So you're right. Yeah. It was. And the problem was that it was apparently there's subsurface problems on Lovers Lane. So mm -hmm. if you pave, you're not going to get much life well, out of it. I was just mentioning it because you know that you would want to coordinate the two, right? So you know we could share with highway improvements funds, um, but I'd have to look at that a little closer. 
It wasn't addressed or broken out in the report, so I just have the project and a value. We're, we're thinking right. about though, yeah, right. okay. Right. All right, anybody else want to make a comment before we give instructions or direction to Matt and to Bill? So it looks to me like the starting point is to decide whether we agree to continue what we started last year, which is to um, come up with rates that cover fixed costs with the base charge um, and then back into the um, um, tier rates based on what else is needed to get us to the appropriate retained earnings. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, that's the motion is to, to basically um, continue the path we started last year, which is to cover fixed cost, projected fixed cost with the base charge, and to then set the um, variable rate um, based on what we need to keep the retained earnings at the 20% of cost. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Andrew? Nope. Okay. Um, how are you voting? Yes. Right. Hands only. We don't need to. Oh, that's true. We're not doing Zoom. So, yeah. okay. there you go. Five zero to carry on. Okay. okay. Thank so you. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Okay. We'll present that for you. Thanks. In two weeks. Okay. Thank you. So, Bill, um, as you know, we, we when we were interviewing you, we, we talked about how important it is to let residents know ahead of time. So, just make sure that you do everything you can so we don't surprise anybody as far as these rates go. Absolutely. Um, I think it should probably go in next Friday's uh, missive as well as, um, you know, the rates are going to change. But watch this space. Sure. And this way they're changing well before the summer where people, if they don't want to yeah. water the lawn, they can turn off the, the water system, right, in right. advance. So it won't be after the fact. Okay. So thank you, Matt. Yeah, nice welcome. to see you again. Nice to see you. Thank you. See you in thank you. Yeah. So, um, Andrew, do you have a tiers report? No, I don't. Okay, so we're going to go right to Mr. Hamilton's members report because it involves Mr. Cundiff, who is going to stay with us through it. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm just going to give a, a quick uh, update on the Atwood Street uh, parcel. As you know, uh, we found lead contamination in there. The good news is, is that we did not find measurable PCBs. Uh, I met with Mr. Cundiff, and uh, Parr joined us on the phone. And, tried to educate me a bit. <clears throat> um, the next step is to do a second round of testing on the existing samples. That second round of testing will tell us what it is we're really dealing with. You know, we found a problem, now we need to figure out what the chemistry we're actually dealing with is. And then that will begin to inform a plan, uh, prob which will probably, in the first step, involve uh, taking more samples so that we can understand the, the more clearly the extent and breadth. Um, <clears throat> it turns out that this is not an unusual problem. Um, this is a problem common to water tanks, which were all painted with uh, lead paint. Um, and as Bill pointed out to me, there were probably five or six crews for the last hundred years that have been out doing this sort of work all over New England and all over the country. And they all use the same stuff and they all use the same methodology. The contamination is mostly around the drip line of the tank. Uh, there is some contamination also in where, where the, the tank actually fell, but more, more testing is needed. Uh, and then <clears throat> ultimately we'll have to get to a mitigation plan. That mitigation plan will probably be informed by the use of the parcel. So we're talking, you know, we're, we're not really making any plans right now for developing the parcel until we sort of know, know how, whole, how deep the hole is. I'm going to meet with uh, Bill, uh, Mark, and um, Brian, <clears throat> just because we have, so I have to have a conversation about who pays for it and where the money comes from. Um, as far as this additional testing? Well, the additional testing and then, you know, long term, whatever we have to do is going to cost money and it's, as you know, it, these things are not cheap. Yeah, I think that makes good sense. I mean, we've talked a little bit about possible uses for the property, but to me, you need to know what we start with and, and uh, what's going on there before you spend any energy trying to come up with hypotheticals there. So I think this is a very prudent way to proceed, and uh, 
I know a lot of folks are interested, so I guess the message is stay tuned. And as we learn more, uh, I assume that we will inform the public as we get more data about this process. Marguerite and I did um, meet with some of the abutters uh, last week, uh, and I brought the, the, the map that Bill provided, and I provided that to a couple of folks since in digital form. Um, you know, we want to make sure people know what's going on there so that, you know, to the greatest extent possible, we're not surprising people. Good. And I've spoken with uh, Wanda Butter also, and uh, again, I think it's good to maintain active communication with what's going on there. And uh, we, as we learn more, we'll let people know. Good enough? Okay. We're having a butter here tonight. Okay, so um, that's it? Okay. Uh, that's it. It was easy. Yeah, I told you yeah. this was really good. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. For have both a good things. night, everyone. When you have real data, it may get harder. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Purple. Yes, um, I have a couple of items tonight. Um, actually, uh, one of the items on here um, that I have under my report, um, David Joyner has um, uh, submitted a letter of resignation uh, from Youth Commission. Um, and, uh, um, you, know, his, um, you know, his situation has changed. He's not leaving town, but, you know, his, his priorities have changed, and therefore he's got to step back from, uh, from the board. Um, you know, um, and, and that's unfortunate. His, his term was up on June 30th, this coming June 30th, but he needs to step back, you know, um, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and so he submitted this letter. Um, I don't know whether um, uh, Kathy or Marguerite wanted to say something because you're probably both better, you know, more qualified to speak to his, um, you know, his involvement in terms of youth and family um, uh, his time on the board, if, if, any of you, if either of you had a a comment. So Marguerite was a longtime member of the board itself and I've been a longtime founder of the Friends Group and treasurer for like 20 years so we are both intimately involved and totally supported. I'd like to at least read a piece of his letter because I thought it was so, such Very a nice well letter. Um, so the last part of it is, uh, says this, my term on the committee expires on June 30th, 2024. I appreciated my time with the Youth and Family Services team and have been fortunate to see firsthand the valuable support that this group provides for the town under great leadership. I wish the commission continued success in its mission and objectives. So I thought it was very nice what he said, so I wanted to point that out. Okay. Uh, a couple of other things. Um, so uh, the moderator is going to be holding his pre-town meeting um, on March 13th at 6 p.m. at the Senior Center. Um, as with uh, the past couple of years, these pre-town meetings um, are not public meetings. They're simply um, the moderator holds meetings with all of the sponsors of the articles have been invited um, to attend. Um, he has sent out separate invitations and uh, we'll use that meeting to try to determine um, the flow of the meeting. Um, I don't believe he's going to have his consent list at that point, mm. um, but um, you know, we should have a little bit more information on the meeting and, and his thoughts on the meeting after that so I can report back or he can come to the next meeting and he can report back to the board as to um, you know the results of that meeting does he you know sometimes he does sometimes he doesn't does he want help with the consent as far as what we would suggest he usually asks me for my okay my thoughts so I have roughly 24 articles mm -hmm. I will suggest to him um, and and we'll see what he does and you know, I, I think that he has tried to be somewhat aggressive with the um, consent list. There always seems to be one or two that gets pulled off before it's voted. But we have been pretty good about taking a number of articles off the table, usually administrative articles, um, routine articles, or things that everyone agrees, including the sponsor, advisory, and select board, um, that we should be unanimously doing these things. Um, so we're going to, I will work with him to come up with that. and. Hopefully we can get that out a little bit earlier than last year. Okay. Um, I got an update from Tim Davis um, today on the um, spring summer registration for camp. Um, they opened registration on Saturday, March 2nd. If you remember, we opened it early for residents um, so that we can let residents get, get first crack at things. Um, over the course of, <clears throat> excuse me, this past Saturday and Sunday, they took in 723 registrations across the entire seasonal offerings. Um, most of them were for the summer eight-week program. 
Um, only one session sold out and there's about 10 to 15 spaces left across each of the other seven weeks. Um, and uh, this year they married each camp week with a half day specialty option focusing on STEM, the arts and sports specific offerings. They're seeing strong numbers in those. Um, and um, they offered a resident only 10% discount for siblings. Um, and they're seeing significant portion of the population taking advantage. Um, they also um, opened registration today for non-residents. They're seeing about an additional 70 plus signups already. Um, and they're about 24% up over last year's registration numbers after the first 72 hours. So things are looking very good for camp sign up. Um, and uh, so I commend um, you know, Tim and his, uh, his staff and um, uh, Christina who is you know, newly minted to the team um, is, is obviously um, have her hand in this now. So um, that's, that's a nice start to see for, uh, for summer registration. And finally, um, I have one thing. Uh, so the um, uh, DPW will issue um, fines uh, for violations at the transfer station. Um, they're far and few between, but they do happen. And sometimes when fines are issued, they are appealed. Uh, and when they have been appealed in the past, this board has, because the board really didn't want to do something at the meeting and bring somebody in, the board assigned a member to represent the board to do the appeal hearing and gave that person, Sam smiling, it gave this person the authority to make the decision on, on behalf of the board for the appeal. Um, and um, we have such an appeal um, sitting, um, sitting on my desk now. So. Uh, I am asking the board, A, if you want to continue to do the same process as before, and if B, you do, who would you like to represent the board? Um, I think Judge Dennington is a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> so take it one question at a time. Does anyone want to change the precedent of, of appointing one person to um, act as judge here? Didn't town administrator used to do that? No. I thought... I was I was not entrusted with that. Okay, so, okay, so um, does anybody want to change the methodology? Which I guess the other choice would be that we do it. All I don't. Well. I don't think we should change necessarily. I mean, it seems to me having a select board member, you know, make the call is not bad, but I don't think we need to debate it as a group in an open meeting. Frankly, well, I'll do it if you want me to do it. You're okay with sure. one person. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually just joking, but I I'd be delighted if you if, if you want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> if if Andrew wants to do Andrew's, it, he's, Andrew's raising his hand over here. Okay, yeah, we I think. All take one step back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Good good luck. Okay. Then I will I will coordinate with Mr. Dennington about uh, about the details. You, um, will you wear your robes when you <laughs> hold the hearing? I, I think a wig would really. Uh, <laughs> English. Okay, moving on. Yeah. So that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Um, consent agenda is small, um, but I do want to, well, we'll we got to talk about A. Um, so let's go ahead and get B approved. We're doing that because uh, we disbanded the community center last, last time, so yeah. they need somebody to approve those yeah, last yeah. I, I actually heard that meeting and it looked okay to me, but yeah. I didn't remember in total detail. You okay? Fine with them. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Anybody have a question on the last set of community center minutes? All right, so someone make a motion. Move we approve consent agenda B. Second. All in favor? Okay, they're done officially now. Okay, so this is where we are with the warrant right now. Um, we just got a text, Andrew and I just got a text from Amy Latrell. They have pulled the um, MBTA article for this town meeting, so they've asked us to actually take it off the warrant so they don't have to go to town meeting and have it um, indefinitely postponed. So. And I just want to give a little bit more context to that because I okay, know so, you know, uh, go go for it. Sure, um, this has to do with um, they discovered that there's some incorrect calculations um, about whether or not the portion of the um, overlay district closest to the train station is meets the density requirements um, to comply with, with the MBTA communities law and that the assumptions, the mathematical assumptions that they were working on before they now understand are not correct. So that's going to require a whole adjustment. 
and um, based on that, the planning board just voted within mm -hmm. the last hour to, to just pull the article and then mm -hmm. take a stab at it, you know, either at a maybe a, a later spring meeting, special town meeting, or at a, a fall town mm -hmm. meeting, TBD. So the consultant did those calculations, right? So they yes. made an error apparently in that process, or? That's what it appears. It appears. Okay, okay, wow. And they voted 5-0 too, it wasn't, um, there was no one arguing. Okay, they all clearly you don't want to go ahead with something that has a flaw. Well, and at this meeting, um, I think the plan was for Bowler to come and give some options about how you could tweak, and I started to see some of the maps. It's just way too much information to adjust it, on the fly just for it, it, You're dead at town meeting if it gets too complicated, for sure. Yeah, And again, you want it to pass, so it needs to be reasonably understandable. <laughs> Don't just have to be careful as far as the timing of the next meeting, because you wait to fall, and then it doesn't pass, and you really are yep. you're up against the wall, so they probably will have to do something earlier. Okay, so the reason this um, is related to um, consent um, item A is that we thought we were going to sign the warrant tonight. So what the plan is, if everybody agrees, is we're going to sign the signature page to it tonight, but they've got to tweak it now to get this out of there. Um, and there's, I think there's a couple of typos too that need to be fixed. So if everybody agrees, we're going to get a clean signature page tonight to actually sign that can get attached tomorrow when they get these things fixed. Is that correct, okay. Mark? Vanessa? Yes, yeah, so everything, so um, as soon as the text came through, so everything has been updated um, the changes that were that were the, the additional tweaks that needed to be done. The article is out. The only thing that needs to be done is just the pagination. So, so we, we've got one more thing though. So let's. But, keep but going the numbering. That. We're going to be talking about um, yes. one article two um, in a minute that we may vote to take off too. We may not, but we're going to talk about it. So we've got to see how that one turns out. Correct. Too. Okay. All right. That that won't affect the number. <laughs> yeah, I did want to bring the board's right? attention. Um, it turns out that there is also a fairly large event that's scheduled to happen at Neary on the same day as uh, town, meeting. town meeting, and you know, uh, we could have a parking problem. Well, so just so everyone knows, it's Easter egg hunt of the um, the kids, the the, the, the children's group, um, and it's at Neary. It's not Trottier, it's Trottier. so you know they can park at Neary, not at Trottier. Um, but, uh, it's we, also, we sometimes overflow into the Nary lot right. for a town meeting. So it's been discussed with them and the board, and they're well aware of the conflict, and they voted to go forward with it. And what time is the, that event? I believe it's 11. It's 11 o'clock. So we're going to be up and running by then, so they may have trouble. And they're the more ones than, that won't than, have the parking. More but, than we will, yeah. Um, if, if people come. So, so this is kinder group. And you know, it's a big group though. So this is not necessarily a small amount of, of kids. It could be a large amount of kids, right? So does someone want to volunteer to maybe take another step at talking to them? And, and the problem is they don't really have a better date. They've got the next day is their rain date. Um, and then of course, Easter is the next weekend. So that's a problem. They don't really have, um, unless they backed it up, um, they don't have a really good choice as far as where to move it. Is there another parking? overflow option down there. I mean, there's field space, but the rec guys don't like people driving on the fields to park, certainly. So, I don't know. Well, first, the first question is, does anyone want to take a stab at talking to whoever is the um, chair of the board and seeing if you could prevail that, you know, we need him at town meeting too. <laughs> well, th that's kind of the, 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 the secondary issue, which is, I think, now, I'm assuming they did this with the approval of the school committee, because they're using the school property. I would think it's REC that approved it, right, Mark? Because it REC yes. really schedules the fields, et cetera, yeah. so I think it's REC that actually yeah. approved this without thinking about the impact on town. How long does that event last? Hour or two, max? It can't last. I mean, it's an Easter egg hunt. Yeah, so yeah it's it it probably, long. well, there's supposed to be food trucks and... Um, well, then yeah. maybe longer than I yeah, thought. So, you know, you know, maybe we use it for lunch. <laughs> um, there's probably not much we can do. I'll, I'll, I can get in touch with him. I well, that's interesting because Jim Haggerty was having trouble getting, he couldn't get food trucks to come to the town meeting. Um, he's got the Girl Scouts doing the food because he couldn't get food trucks to come. So, so you want to take a stab at saying maybe? Um, I can certainly ask right? if they could, if it could be raining that day. <laughs> yeah, and just go to their rain day um, and hope that it doesn't rain on Sunday. Yeah, because otherwise I, I think they're going to have... You're right. The, uh, the, the Ginder Group is going to have a parking problem, I suspect. Because, you know, this is likely to, and 
we should, as a, as a matter of policy, encourage people not to schedule town events on the day of town meeting. Um, you know, we need, we need people to show up and, and participate. Yeah. Who knows when they schedule this? Um, <laughs> but yeah, we should be more cognizant of, of what's going on to not let this happen. Okay, so there's it. So um, we're going to talk about this article in a second. Then, Mark, you've got the signature page ready to, to sign? Okay. All right, so I don't see anything to really approve on A. Um, we're going okay. to sign it, right? We just got to wait you're, Wait until we go through the um, discuss Article 48. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then we really will know what it's going to look like. Okay, so other matters. Um, we were going to, initially, uh, we were going to sign the, you know, the site board makes a lot of the motions at town meeting, the ones that we sponsor. So we go through and does one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. We were going to do it, but we thought better since there's so many articles that are probably going to be on the consent agenda. Yep. We're, going to wait, we're going to wait until we know what that looks like and then assign. Okay. Uh, okay. Can we offer a preference? I've got yeah. four or five yeah, so that that's I've been what, involved in, well, so I will send. Andrew's call, but um, I was going to say, you know, who wants, you know, if you got one, raise your hand. If not, we're just going to go one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So that's going to wait. Um, so I, I, I will just I will just point out that um, a lot of the articles that belong to select board are routine articles that we see every year. Yep. Um, likely will end up on consent list, yep. and likely you will not get to make your motion. Okay. I, so I, I'm just pointing out <laughs> that you know we will set it up so that each article has a has has somebody to make the motion, yep. but it may be they get con, you know um, put on consent list. Yep. I think four of my six last year were consent. I'm trying yes. to do better than yeah. that this year. So, <laughs> five, out of six. five out of six are all six. All right. So next, we really just covered a review of the outstanding issues with the warrant. Let me just um, though make sure everybody's on the same page as far as what happened with advisory last Wednesday. So they revoted a few things. We ended up with an agreement on the budget, which does include the new town engineer for DPW. It's got no new additions in the police department yet, so we agreed with that, so we, we'd come around to that, so that's that budget. They also voted 5-1 to support the golf course irrigation project. So that's the two votes they changed on were the engineer, that was a 3-3, they changed that to 6-0 after hearing from Bill, and then after hearing from Tony Schoner, they changed that vote to 5-1. to one. And the only reason there was a 1 was um, because he thought that it should be funded out of the revolving account instead of CPC. He didn't, he didn't disagree with the project. He just thought it should mm -hmm. be funded that way. That's good. So we've got the only difference, if you look at all the votes we've got um, between advisory and select board, the only difference right now is the vote for the stabilization capital fund for ASABET. We voted 2-3 to not support the regional one. We voted 6-0 to support the K-8 special ed one, and so did advisory. So um, advisory has voted 0-6 not to support ASABAT. We voted 5-0 to support it, so. You know, it's a small number to us. Uh, we can, you know, we can say to town meeting, this is a pro, this is a con, and yep. get that settled pretty quick, I think. Yep. I, mean, I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of um, um, talk about that one, but that's it. So everything else is in line. Okay, um, next one, we've got article number 48 on what we've got tonight with the warrant. Um, proposed, it's a citizen petition by um, um, Joe Palmer to increase the threshold for CPA funded projects when they are not town owned property to two thirds from a simple majority, which is what it is right now. Um, as everybody knows, part of the process to get the warrant ready is we send it to town council. He reviews all the articles for their legality and words, you know, he adds words, whatever. And he came back and said that this is illegal because it conflicts with state law. He then checked with the attorney general to make sure he was right. The attorney general came back and right and said he was right, that it would be rejected if it came to them. So um, we've got a couple choices. Um, we can vote to remove it tonight because we know it's not going to go anywhere. Or we can leave it and let it let it go through town meeting, let town meeting vote on it. Um, I believe Jay's going to stand up, though, and say, or Paul's going to say it's illegal, but still allow the vote, right, and then let it go to the AG and get rejected. So I'm going to go this way. Sure. Okay. okay. Um, Al? Uh, I would be in favor of leaving it in. I think, you know, the concept that, you know, citizens are allowed to put something before us, no matter 
whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, um, I think it's showing respect for the citizens to, and, and their desire to, to debate various matters. And you know, Hopefully this will be a very short debate with an indefinite postponement, but uh, I think we should leave it in. Okay. Marguerite? I'd like to hear from the person who submitted the article. What he wants to do? Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Joe, do you mind coming up? Um, plain and simple, I'd like to see it be voted on. I think it would serve to show the sentiment of the town regarding these types of projects and the way that they would like to be it, the way they would like it to be. Um, even if the AG wants to shoot it down, um, I think it sets a precedent as to the feelings of the people that were at town meeting. So you want it to stay? Yes. Okay. Mm. Marguerite? Okay, so I'm okay with it staying. Sam? Um, we get a lot of feedback that town meeting is too long. I think this wastes town meeting members' time, so I would pull it. So I am kind of torn here. I, I kind of agree with everybody. <laughs> so I'm going to vote um, to, to leave it on based on what Joe said, which is at least you get an idea of what um, town meeting thinks about the idea of it, even though um, it's not going to, to be effective, at least until state law changes. Yeah, I would also uh, just leave it on because, um, you know, I looked at the, the case that um, cited in the, uh, the draft letter and also I went back and looked at the CPA statute and I, I didn't find a specific, you know, requirement in the CPA statute that approval um, by town meeting for a specific project has to be majority. So I think by... If it's, if it's voted at town meeting and, and it's not accepted, then the whole question of whether or not it was proper for the select board to remove it or not just becomes moot. And so then we just if, it, the, if, it, if it passes, it still has to go to the AG. Yeah, so we just let the AG them. make the decisions this yeah. way, and we hear what the town thinks about but, it. So. But it was, I mean, looking at it was interesting because um, it, it is the case that the select board does have the right to, for something that is um, for an improper purpose to not include it on the, the warrant. But I agree that you know, you should be you know, thinking about making those decisions really carefully. All right, so I'll make a motion to keep Article 48 on the warrant. Second. Second. Yep. Okay. Um, all in favor? All opposed? Okay, so four, one, two, keep it on the warrant. Okay, Joe. Thank be you. Be ready. <laughs> okay, the next one was, um, you know, planning board was meeting tonight too, so we couldn't, they couldn't come here, we couldn't go there. So we put this on there in case we wanted to zoom into their meeting, but I don't see any purpose of doing that at this point, given that we know they pulled the article. And there's a, there's a Neary Building Committee meeting that starts at 7.30 that I'd like to attend to. Yep. Um, so for both reasons, I don't see any reason to zoom in unless you want to. They may even be done at this point. They've already voted to, to pull it. Yeah, I, I think one thing that might be helpful is you know the next decision, um, which is probably gonna be kind of a joint um, planning board, select board decision is when, when the next version of this comes. Is it do you wait until the fall town meeting or do you try a special town meeting between, between now and then? And I mean, my preference is to try to get this done earlier rather than, than later. Partly so, because our, we've already been targeting for our fall town meeting, you know, a big, dis, a big discussion and decision on um, regional dispatch and I agree with you, so let's just get them in here and get a, a date that seems to be mutually yeah. agreeable to do it. So we're going to have two, yep. two special meetings. And Andrew, I think that the usual concern about special town meeting is that you might not get a quarum, but this is popular enough that uh, I think you'll get, you'll get a good turnout whenever we have it. Yeah. So I, I think, think that's so too. useful to keep moving. And I, the, the special town meeting we had on for the downtown district where it was you know, 10 articles, one evening, I thought was great. Yep. Yeah. And there was plenty of people at that meeting. Yes. So. All right. Everybody agree? So we'll get them in here and get a date set for that one, and then we'll start talking about the date for our fall one. All right. I think that's it. Um, so any? Oh, just okay. my question is, I have the English major. I have a number of, like, little typo things happening, like it says trials instead of trials. Yeah, we caught that. We caught got that one? Got that one, yeah. Okay. And there, was other, there were a couple of others where um, it was a citizen's petition, but it was not listed as a citizen's petition. 
So can you show Mark and Vanessa? Yes, we're, we're about that's to what I was saying. We're Let's adjourn. I will just show that to Mark and Vanessa. It's just totally a little housekeeping. So, yeah, so I, w I will say if the petitioner of a citizen petition submitted a summary, then the sum and, that, and I assume that's what you're saying, the summary is listed as they submitted it. If there was no summary submitted, then it is simply put, this is a citizen's petition. All right, okay. Yeah, so that, that's why some of the citizen petitions don't have... Don't have it, okay. Correct. That makes sense, thank and you. And one other correction that we made was, in the, ver in the last version that went out midday <clears throat> for articles... Six and seven. Six and seven. Those were Mrs. Fanoff's um, articles. Yep. It said, in, in this version, it said select board was at town meeting, but we voted not to support those two, so the, that's been fixed. That's so been Andrew fixed. fixed that. And then one other thing, too, that happened between last week and this week that was advisory-related, they um, voted 0-6 not to support the Gold Star article to um, um, compensate Bra parents. Brave Act. And yeah. so possibly pulled that article. So it's yeah. not on here anymore, so oh. we're not even going to deal with that um, as far as town meeting goes. It's gone. Right, so, so just one other question, just about wording, like Article 30 which is the CPA, it says if you haven't spent the funds by December 2026, the funds to be returned. Is that what you haven't spent, or is that the whole today? What hasn't been spent? Then shouldn't it say unspent funds? It's a CPC article. The wording so is, the word, the wording is their wording. Oh, okay. That's what was voted. All right. But you're right. They would have made it. Yeah. It should have been that way, yeah. yeah. All right. So we yes, fixed sir. everything we can fix. <laughs> yeah. well, we control, we can fix what somebody else does. It's their, their words. <clears throat> so anyone in the audience, a public comment? No hands up. No hands up. Okay. Um, what time is it? Yep. Ooh, 7.43, not bad. All right, so motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor? Yeah. All right. We'll let Kathy run more of these meetings.